Hello again. This is part 2 of the IO Auto Assignment video from the Wonderware System Platform 2014 R2 video series. In the previous video, we focused on the mainstream workflow. If you haven't watched that, make sure you watch part 1 of the IO Auto Assignment video. Today, we're going to focus on tips and tricks on functionality around the IO Devices view and the IO Device Mapping view. So what we did last time is we left off with uh, two controllers that we created using the uh, naming scheme functionality and the assignment to the areas. So we have R33 and R34. Each one is currently assigned to a different scan group, right? So things that we could do actually in these views is uh, change the assignment of, uh, of one of the objects to a different scan group. For example, if I take um, the reactor here, uh, zero, actually better one would be uh, the product storage. It's probably a slow communicating communication device. I you know the storage level is not going to change that often, so I may want to move that one to my slow scan group. It's going to ask me if I want to make the change, and as you can see, once I click on the slow scan group, it has automatically been changed. So if you notice, this IO auto assignment becomes very powerful in making those changes. I did not have to check in, check out, or modify the object, and uh, the change was made automatically. So let's go ahead and put uh, this one back here. You know, similarly, I could make a change of the entire set to a different scan group. Uh, now let's take a little bit uh, more of a bigger case. Uh, let's say that my reactor skit, that particular reactor skit uh, was changed or upgraded. So a new one came from the manufacturer, but this time instead of using a, a Rocco controller, is using a G controller. So I have prepared here, uh, just for the purpose of the demo, uh, a DDE suite link that is uh, communicating to the, our GE SRTP DA server. And I already have created three topics similar to what I did in the other one, just to follow my same naming convention. So the easiest thing to do, since I have uh, my, all my equipment tied to that uh, area, I'm just going to drag the area from here to the same topic on the G controller. Alright, and then once we click to the G controller, and as uh, you may recall, uh, clicking in the different areas uh, uh, is actually the filter driver for the IO device mapping view. So I'm going to go to the normal uh, scan group and as you can see everything is mapped uh, to that GE controller and uh, right the device is mapped the scan group is mapped uh, and I'm going to do a quick validate and everything here is incorrect so I'm going to check uh, maybe a couple of things why and one thing that I noticed right off the bat is that the naming convention that they use in the controller for this particular uh, reactor is slightly different. They're using a G instead of an R. So since uh, I don't have the capability to modify the PLC, I could do several things. Uh, I c the easiest one is if I haven't done anything, I can co come here to my object, change the R to a G, and we'll refresh the table and uh, you notice that everything is uh, now changed. I'll go ahead and run my validation again and I see that now uh, I have much better state, a couple reds there so let's focus on one. Uh, I want to understand why this is different. I'm going to take again a quick look at my uh, controller and I see here that RPM is a, has a slightly different uh, uh, naming convention. So we really haven't discussed uh, either of these two columns and now this is where some of this functionality comes into play. What can I do with the override columns? So I'm just going to use my notepad here as my scratch pad um, and I'm going to modify the name here. Uh, as you can see here from the columns, the actual resulting reference is a concatenation of a device that scan group plus the object that attribute reference. So what I'm do doing here is I just need to change the object that attribute reference. 
uh, and I'm going to correct it using Notepad. I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And you can see that now it's bolded because I have a pending change. And let's see if that validates correctly. So now that my pending change validated correctly, I got, I got to remember to uh, commit those changes. So now this change is committed and it will go to runtime once I deploy the object. So this is great. Uh, now that I'm happy with what I got here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my objects and move them to my production galaxy. So I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, let's see what we have here. I'm going to go ahead and take everything and including uh, before I do that uh, yeah, everything was in the in that in sing, the same scan group okay so that's perfect we'll go ahead and take the object with the area and I'm gonna take also the controller with it okay we we'll go ahead and run the export Go ahead and save it. Alright, since I'm working on a uh, VM environment, I'm actually... I can copy and paste. Okay, so this is my runtime galaxy. We're going to go ahead and paste that package here. the package just use the default preferences and uh, you'll notice you know while the, the package is important that I really don't have those here I do have the uh, West reactor uh, area but I don't have the DI object or or the other objects one thing to keep in mind is if you're not sure you know you you do want to keep in mind that the assignment needs to have a DI object present for that as for that assignment to be preserved. So uh, that's uh, why it's important to to have those. All right. So I see that the objects are sh have shown up. So our objects came up. We have the DI object. And it looks like they are assigned to the proper scan groups. And then if we go ahead and click on this, our table will refresh. And you'll notice that with it came the attribute override. Very important part so that as I move from a, let's say, a, a development galaxy to a production galaxy, all my, all, my, all my information and assignments carry through. So you see how that, how simple that was. Let's go back to our uh, development galaxy. And here, now one uh, thing that we're going to do is, uh, let's pick, for example, the reactor. We're going to modify this object and add uh, an electricity service to it. Uh, so I ju just added this attribute and what I did is I added the attribute after, uh, not in the template but in the instance itself because it's a unique object and it's only at the, uh, at the instance level. So what we're going to do is type the electricity service to this other uh, device, right? And so we'll leave our configuration as uh, IO auto assigned. Let's go ahead and close it, and we'll select the reactor. Okay, and the electricity service is here. If I try to validate that, uh, I'm going to a different one. So what I need to do is I need to put my manual override here. Uh, so I can try into the building service. So is the building? The standard is the scan group. And then in my object override, it's just electricity service all 
All right, let's try to validate that, see if it comes up. Okay, uh, I must have done something. I look. Oh, okay, I misspelled it. So validate. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, one of the other things that I can do is I, I am not tied to a single object uh, assignment. If there's cases where I need uh, to have within attributes of the objects assignments to different pieces, I could do it at this level. And obviously I want to commit that. Uh, similarly, let's try a, a something uh, slightly different, which is, um, as you notice, we've been using uh, some of the very standard IO assignments, but uh, now I just use the case for an area. As you know, now I can create attributes in an area. So just for the purpose of this demo, let's say that uh, I wanted that electricity service. And since this is a test, we don't really worry about that. But uh, I want to actually bring that from a different galaxy. Uh, so I go here to my namespace and I'm going to look at some. Uh, I also have OPC UA devices tied here, same type of uh, nomenclature that we use in multi-galaxy, the device colon. So here I'm going to pick my runtime galaxy, my production galaxy. Okay, and because I have multi-galaxy configured, I can browse their namespace. Uh, there's a utilities objects, and from that utilities objects, we'll pick uh, the electricity service. So now, let's use this basically to uh, copy our sor source. So I'll come here and replace that. All right, then let's go ahead and do a validation. And you notice that the pa that validated to true. If we go to our second galaxy, <coughs> there's a building service area with the utilities that is deployed and, and running. So um, that basically shows you that we can also use the multi-galaxy nomenclature here uh, for, for the purpose of that override, for manipulating that uh, information and before we're done let's go ahead and commit those changes so this gives you a better idea of how do the IO auto assignment can be used in a mainstream scenario as well as a more advanced scenario that all will always help you uh, get that uh, plant up and running as soon as possible or maintaining you know without too much delay again thank you for watching and keep tuned for more videos